Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gavin, and I'm your reporter today. Today, we look into the life of another other than Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington was born on April 29, 1899. His career spanned over more than half a century, and in which time he composed hundreds to thousands of songs for stage, screen, and songbook alike. Duke Ellington was an American composer, pianist, and leader of a jazz orchestra, which he led from 1923 until his death on May 24, 1974, creating the term American music. At the age of 19, Duke Ellington married Edna Thompson, who was his girlfriend since high school, and gave birth to their only child, Mercer Kennedy Ellington, shortly after their marriage. Duke Ellington became an increasingly honored and venerable celebrity in the post-war era, and many African Americans looked up to him to make a public comment on the race issue. However, he remained committed to a conservative worldview that showed the importance of education, hard work, and his talent in a particular skill. Only when a defendant number of black Americans had followed this route, life route, Ellington believed it would be possible to build a bridge from which to advocate, politically demand, full civil rights. Duke Ellington's band played numerous charity events for the National Association of the Advancements of Colored People, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the Congress of Racial Equality, and the Urban League. And now we go to Gavin with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Thanks, Gavin. Now, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee is made up of young activists and organizers with the SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. It's pronounced SNCC. Represented, a radical, new, unanticipated force whose work continues to have a great relevance today. For the first time, young people decisively entered the ranks of civil rights movement leadership. Young people committed themselves to full-time organizing from the bottom up and with this approach empowered older efforts at change and facilitated the emergence of powerful new grassroots voices. Before SNCC, with only a few exceptions, notably the Southern Negro Youth Congress, SNYC, during the 1930s and 40s civil rights leadership, always meant grown-ups. The Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, founded in 1942, grew during the 1960s because of a significant influx of young leadership into its ranks. There were more SNCC field secretaries working full-time in southern communities than any other civil rights organization, speaking on February 16, 1960, at the White Rock Baptist Church in Durham, North Carolina.